It's a lovely, comfortable car to drive. I just get a shiver down my back. It's a great car. When you're driving it, you feel like Lord of the Manor, you know, people start to call you sir. <laughs> I may be biased, but I think this is a beautiful looking car. What girl could ask for anything more? <laughs>Richard and Alan Jensen were both car enthusiasts in their teens. They actually started building cars in their backyard in their spare time. And the first one they built was called the Jensen Special No. 1. And uh, it was put together with bits and pieces that were given to them by all their friends in the motor trade. And uh, that really got the bug going. They were bitten. So the Jensen brothers joined a company called Edgebaston Garages in Birmingham and they started in the coach building side of the business. They became so involved with this business that the directors actually invited them to become directors themselves. In 1934 it became Jensen Motors Limited. The actual business was still very much a coach builder and it was a commercial coach builder. So they were involved with any sort of commercial vehicle body that you could imagine. But the Jensen brothers were enthusiasts for the motor car, and particularly sporting motor cars as well. And they started work almost immediately on the prototype of their ideal sports carriage. Within 12 months, the first production Jensen, which was called the S-Type, was actually a reality. This is a 1938 Jensen 3.5 litre S-Type. Most people, when they see the Jensen, have no idea what it actually is. A lot of people think it's a pre-war Jaguar. The radiator looks a bit like a Mercedes. The body looks like Jaguar or Alvis. The wheels remind you of a Bentley. I think the Jensen's basically plagiarised the best features of other vehicles and put it together as one. Back in the 1930s, the kind of people that bought a car like this must have been either very rich or gullible because the price was about £750 and for less than half of that you could have had the Ford on which it was based. However, you wouldn't have got the style and the charisma which goes with this car. Jensen's raided the Ford parts bins for anything they wanted other than the bodywork. I may be biased, but I think this is a beautiful looking car. The S-Type was unique in that the attention to detail that was put in by the Jensen brothers and their coach building expertise really made it a very special motor car and because of this style became very much a byword of the Jensen motor cars in years to come. A friend of mine told me that he'd seen this car in a scrapyard and I just bought it as seen for £350. Restoring the car was a real labour of love in that it took me seven years from actually amassing all the parts to having it on the road. Like many pre-war cars, the steering was very heavy and dead. And I thought to myself, what would Jensen's have done back in the 1930s? The answer is that I've looked around for a suitable Ford component. I spent a lot of time looking around scrapyards at old Ford vehicles and eventually I found the ideal steering box, which was from a scrap Ford Transit van. The overall impression when driving this car is of the smoothness and easy running of the Ford V8 engine. The engine is really the heart of the car. It also makes the beautiful noise which only a V8 can produce. A 
I really like this car and unless my fortunes took a disastrous turn, I think I will be keeping it for a long time. During the war, like most other British manufacturers, Ensign had some unusual jobs to do in the war effort. They actually produced bombs, they produced bomb crates, they produced turrets for tanks. After the war, Jensen's had a lot of projects in the pipeline and they wanted a designer to help them with these projects. So Eric Neal joined Jensen's drawing office. One of Eric Neal's first projects was the Jensen Interceptor. This interceptor was powered by an Austin engine. Austin had just merged with Morris to produce BMC, but there was still a lot of internal rivalry between the two companies. And of course, Morris had produced the MG sports cars. So Austin approached other manufacturers to design a sports car for them, and indeed it became a bit of a competition. Jensen produced a prototype of the sports car for this competition, but at the motor show at Earl's Court in 1952, Leonard Lord, who was the boss at Austin's, decided on the spot that the new Healy was to be the new Austin sports car. This wasn't a total disaster for Jensen though, because the new Austin Healy was very much coach built and Austin didn't have the capacity to actually produce it in any great number, so Jensen got the contract to build it. This new contract also gave the Jensen company financial security, so they immediately started thinking about a successor to the Interceptor model, and thus the 541 was born.